742, I think, at the bottom. Did we get to 744? I think so. If people would be satisfied with, with their needs. And people's initiative would be with it having in mind that everybody should be beneficiaries. And to give everyone an equal chance. The world would actually, they would be able to be successful in their worldly endeavors. You know, David brought up the whole thing about competition. I mean, what do people compete? Let's give people of equal ability this competition. So one succeeds and the other one doesn't succeed. Because only one person is going gonna, is gonna to win. But let's say, but why does a person want to win? Let's say he has sufficient... So why, why is he competing? Because he wants more. By you having more, somebody else may have less. By not working together as a team, but if you'd work together as a team, in terms of the, for the benefit of, 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 the, of the whole, the whole would benefit, the group would benefit to a greater degree. Right? Because people feel they need more. But if a person would only apply himself to a degree that it, for his need, nothing more mm -hmm. than his need, and people would work as team players, that for the benefit of the whole, the, the whole would benefit to a greater degree. Not only don't they assist one another, they actually try to undermine one another. And they interfere, and they weaken, and they prevent, that people don't succeed whatsoever. Lo yasik tavoso and will not achieve his desire. I mentioned the other week, not the other day, the other week, where Rav Steinman had said why he, he believes the economy went south in America. He says things were thriving to such a degree that people had enough money, such a level of success, they could have easily, easily supported all Torah in the world. I'm not talking about non-religious people, I'm talking about observant, even people connected to Torah. And because they did not, their losses were beyond people's imaginations. What they had and what they lost. Mm -hmm. but, so why did they give it? So why did they give it? It would, it would have been meaningless in terms of their, their levels of, of success in those few years. So why didn't they give it? Right? The answer is because they're focused on themselves and nobody else. Rather than looking at somebody else's need, you're looking at your level of achievement, your le own level of security. But they were secure, sufficiently secure. But that's the way it is. So Hashem says, when I give it to you, you don't give it away, so I'm taking it back. That's what he said. But if a person's outlook is for the benefit of the whole, why don't you give it away? But you see, it's interesting. The Chavetz Chaim writes in Avos Chesed, the Gemara says in Ksubis, that a Jew is not permitted to give more than a fifth of his earnings to Tzedakah. Very, very exceptional. Exceptional. Why? Because if you give more than 20%, it may, actually, it actually may undermine your own financial base, and you'll become needy. He says, what about when it comes to support Torah? He says, he says that's an investment. You're a partner. The person wants to make investments. They say, well, don't only invest 20% because you may actually, it may undermine your, your, your financial stability. It's an investment. It's not you feeding a poor person or supporting another cause. Here it's a full investment that you're a partner. There you can give away 95% if you want because you're a partner. So here, if Jews would see it right, we're not giving it away. When, I, when I'm in giving it to Torah, that's an investment. I'm a partner. So even without them, even without the Chovas of is what he's saying over here. If you'd look at the, the, at the benefit of the whole, things would look different. But people are only looking at their own benefit. But this is the, your own benefit when it comes to supporting Torah. Because that's a partnership.
He had no, he had no, um, again, what about a person who competes so strongly he puts all his competitors out of business? Is it the right thing? Definitely not. Right? Because you want to make more, you're going to put your competitors out of business, the wrong thing to do. Well, I can. I'm doing nothing wrong. Doesn't make a difference, but factually you're hurting people. He felt because people were actually patronizing his store because it was the Chabetz Chaim, he's doing the wrong thing. He's, putting, he's hurting other people. You know, if that's the case, I'm closing down the shop. See, there it's different. It's different. Walmart is different. Walmart is different because it's benefiting the people. See, here... It's not that he, his price was any less than anybody else's price. It's they were, they, they were patronizing him. Society, he better buy. The same item, a lot cheaper. So if that's the case, what do you do the right thing? So for the, for the, better, for the betterment of the whole, you're hurting a few. Maybe you, that's what you should do. The question is, why are you being competitive? I'm saying if you're, you're a store in a neighborhood, you're, you're, you're spreading your prices less than right, and then everybody comes to you. So that's the wrong thing. Why is that the wrong thing? They said that's, that's the why thing. are you cutting your prices? You want to get more but you're putting other people out of business. Are you going to keep the prices low? Let's say yes. Even after you put them out of business? Let's say yes. Okay. So that's the Walmart story. That's the Walmart story. But let's say you won't. Well, let's say whatever it is. You, you, it's, it's a more relaxing atmosphere to shop in your store versus other stores. It's more attractive, right? So, but price is the same. Then you're doing the wrong thing. You're doing the wrong thing. Your store, you give out uh, nuts and sweets for the children. For the children. Or aren't going to patronize other stores. They can't, they can't afford to do the same thing. It's been where they can't afford to do the same thing. Okay. The person, the person who wants to be in Fifth Avenue is not going to Chabad. <laughs> that what? I don't get it. Hillel's put pressure on the establish that what? Yeah, that what? To recruit. Okay. And they had 12 people, 15 Orthodox Americans in the Chabad case to town. And it takes five of them away. So now there isn't a union over there. There's no union. First of all, the Gemara says, okay, I, I don't want to get to speak about any specific group, but the Gemara says in Baba Basra, that when it comes to Torah, it's going to be Torah la diro. Competition is permitted because since, in terms of Torah, the key is to deliver a better product, and competition will bring the best out in people. Therefore, it's, it, it, the, the laws of competition have no relevance to Torah. That's what it's, that's the mark. Kinesov and That's exactly what the Gemara says. You know, you you want you want to attract students. Have a better faculty, have a better curriculum, have a better quality education. That's it. Because w w what's our interest? The interest is the the end result. The student is the, is the interest. Our interest. Whoever will produce the the better quality Talmud Chacham, better Jewish education. That's what we do. But over there, it's something else. There, it's, that competition is different competition. 
because one is that you want to sell your brand of, of Judaism versus another brand of Judaism, a whole different, different agenda. But it is. It's no, no fact. You know, they preach what they preach. That, that's a fact. Right. Complicated. Complicated. Yeah. And it's, it's not so simple. It's not so simple because also the affiliation of, of the Hillel is real, of the Hillel movement is really a conservative movement. It's also, it's conservative. So, what happens, you know, you have a conservative service, you know, you take people from conservative, bring them over to an orthodox world. Is there a question? So bringing to something orthodox versus which is not orthodox, It is, it is, it is, it is. It's, it's based, it's based on, it's, the, it's based on who actually, who runs the Hillel. But it's funded, it's funded by, it's the conservative movement. That's Hillel. Of course now they, they recruit everybody, but in terms of the, 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 no, no, even today, even today, even today, even today, even today, you research the background. There's certain bylaws in Okay, because they realize maybe they're going out of business. It's like they justify, you know, one time they wouldn't tolerate a uh, yarmulke in a reform temple. Uh, but they, they realize, you know, they have to be a little more flexible, otherwise they can lose, the, lose their constituency totally. So they allow it. They'll tolerate it. Okay? Let's see the Gemara.